All right, so here we're talking about right-hand limits, left-hand limits, and then a two-sided limit. So uh, they give two examples here, basically. They have one where we have the x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus 1, and we're taking the limit here on the right-hand side. So we're going from negative 1 from the right-hand side. Here, for the left-hand side, we're going from negative 1 to the, from the left-hand side to the negative. And then here's the two-sided limit. We're just looking at the negative 1. And go back, please. All right, so when we do this, we get positive infinity. Here, we get negative infinity. Now, to get a two-sided limit, that has to equal that. Since those two are not equal in this case, then this does not exist for this example. Now, if we look at our second example, here again, we're coming from the right. Here, we're coming from left. Both of them are equal to positive infinity. Therefore, the two-sided limit is equal to positive infinity. So when is it correct to say that a limit does not exist? And when is it correct to use positive or negative infinity? Well, that all depends on the situation. If it notes that we should use infinite limits to describe the behavior at vertical asymptotes, we get the above table, which I just talked about. Now, if we've been asked to evaluate the actual limits with no mention of infinity or asymptotes, then the correct answer would be that all of these limits do not exist, okay? So remember, infinity is the symbol used to describe the behavior of the function at vertical asymptotes. So limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes are used to describe the behavior of functions as x assumes arbitrarily large or small, oh, large positive or large negative values, so really large values, either way, positive or negative. Now, the symbol of positive infinity is used to indicate that an independent variable is increasing without bounds through positive values. All right. And the symbol negative infinity is used to indicate independent variable is decreasing without bound through negative values. Ver oh, yeah, through negative values. So that was kind of like, you know, it's decreasing without bound negative or increasing without bound positive. Okay. So the limits at infinity are always either x goes to a positive or negative infinity. So and that and then this one x is going to positive infinity this way and x is going to negative infinity that way so that's kind of how how those are looking all right so theorem two says the limit of power functions at infinity so if p is a positive real number and k is any real number except for zero then we have the limit for our one here of x approaches negative infinity of k over xp that's just going to be equal to zero now, if we're going to positive infinity of the same thing, that's also equal to zero. Now, if we're multiplying instead of dividing, and we're going to negative, uh, x goes to negative infinity, what happens is, is it's going to either be infinity or negative infinity. And same thing happens when you go to positive infinity, it's going to be positive or negative. And it all depends that, you know, xp is a real number for negative values of x, and uh, 3 and 4 is really going to depend on what your k value is and your p-value. If those are even or odd for p's, and if it's positive or negative k's. And this problem here is an example of that. And the key thing is, is we have the minus 4x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus the 3x. And so what happens is we're going to have the limit of p of x as x approaches infinity is going to be what? Well, okay, let's put in a positive infinity here. So that's going to be a minus 4 times a positive infinity, and that's to the fourth, plus 2 times a positive infinity to the third, plus 3 times infinity. Well, this is going to be positive times that. So that's going to be a negative infinity, basically. And but it's going to be a huge negative. And so it's going to be bigger than this one because this is going to be a positive and this is going to be positive. Those are positive infinities, but they're smaller than the infinity kind of to the fourth. So really what happens is this is going to go to negative infinity. Now what happens is if we have p to the x as x approaches negative infinity? Well, here we have a minus 4, and then we have a minus infinity to the fourth plus 2 times negative infinity to the third, plus 3 times negative infinity. Well, in this case, you know, this is going to be a positive here because that fourth takes that makes it positive. But here it's a negative, so that's a negative infinity. Well, that's a negative infinity, and that's a negative infinity. So that whole thing really is showing negative infinity. The whole key is we have to realize that these two pieces are much smaller than this piece, and so therefore 
it's still going to be a negative infinity in that case. This one, all three pieces are negative infinity, and so therefore we have that negative infinity. All right, so here we have uh, another theorem. It says, uh, now we're looking at polynomial functions at infinity. So kind of what this was, if we think about it, that's a polynomial function. And so it says, if we have P of X is equal to some A sub N, X to the N plus A sub N minus one, X to the N minus one, on down to A zero, and our A N is not zero, and our N is greater than or equal to one, then the limit of this as X approaches infinity is going to be equal to the limit of just that first term. And that's kind of what we saw here. Really that first term determined this one, and it determined this one. This one added some more negative to it, but it didn't help much. I mean, this one's way bigger. And these two were positives, but, and it didn't make this one a negative overall. And so that's kind of what this is showing. So it depends on that initial term there, that first term. And again, it depends on what your n is and what your a sub n is, on what you get, either a positive or negative infinity. Now, if we have a polynomial with degree zero, so you know we said we had to have greater than one, then basically you just have a constant and your limit as X approaches either positive or a negative infinity is really just gonna be that constant A sub zero, okay? Now, polynomial functions of degree one or greater never have any horizontal asymptotes. So here we have a pair of limit expressions of the form, limit of F of X as X approaches infinity is equal to A, and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is b, where a and b are negative and positive infinity are real numbers. That describes their end behavior of the function. Now, the first of the two limits uh, describe the right end behavior, and the second describes the left end behavior. So the right end and the left hand end behavior, okay? So let's pause here and let's go look at some problems in a little bit.